Hi guys, welcome to the Watch Hobbyist channel. So I have something very, very special here today. This is a Panerai 235, it's a Radiomir. Um, there were only 250 of these ever made worldwide. Um, so that in itself is obviously pretty special. Um, you know, when you hear of limited editions from other brands such as Amiga, for example, the latest Amiga 007 watch, uh, I think it's something like, uh, is it 10,000 or 11,007 pieces or 7,007 pieces have been created, you know, and that's a limited edition, and that's fair enough, that's worldwide, um, but this is 250, um, so that's a pretty small run um, of watches. Now, Panerai generally do that with their sort of higher end pieces like this, and um, this has a huge retail price. Um, I should uh, I should say it's not actually mine. Um, it's somebody that I offered to take some pictures because they're selling it. Um, but this is not a sales review. I just wanted to review it for the channel because it's such a unique thing to have. Um, I'll probably never see another one of these again. Firstly, just because there's only 250 of them, and secondly, because obviously it's an expensive watch, um, and you know it's uh, it's quite unique. So. We have um, various complications going on now. Some people are going to like that. I like that personally. I think it's fantastic to have complications. I never mind them at all. I'm a massive fan of chronographs and dive watches and, and all sorts of things. You know that anything with a complication. I mean, a date is a complication. I like a date. Um, I go against that with um, the Black Bay, uh, which you've seen in my first couple of videos, but. Um, for the most part, I generally go for things with complications. So this for me is like a real dream because uh, it's got absolutely everything. So the first thing we see here is if I just bring it closer. So we have the bar going across here just above the number six. That's a 10 day power reserve meter. So this watch has 10 days of power. Um, so obviously most watches, I mean that's what, so 240 hours of power. Um, the general Rolex Diver would have, say, 48 hours, and the Black Bay, which you saw in the other videos, hopefully, um, is 38 hours. So this is 240 hours, so it's a huge power reserve, and normally with the large power reserves on Panerai's, it's actually a manual wind, so you wind it by hand, get so far, it's fully wound, and then it winds down over the next few days, and that's how it stays. But with this, we actually have an automatic movement um, so the watch just keeps winding while it's on your wrist and um, so you know that's basically meaning that if you wear this regularly you will never need to, to wind it up and um, even if you wear it just once a week you'll be fine um, but 10 days is huge okay really huge power reserve and I think it's a great thing to have as well um, we also have uh, if I just Unwind the onion crown, the gorgeous onion crown. This is actually a white gold case and it's a white gold crown. Um, and the way that this crown catches the light is fantastic. Um, it's got a real luster to it because of the white gold and it just looks fantastic in the daylight under artificial light, which it is now. It just catches the light. You won't see it on the video, but in reality, trust me, what I'm seeing, it looks great. Um, if we pull that to the first position, we now have access to the, uh, first of all, the GMT function, but also the date change as well. So I hope you can see actually, if you, if it focuses, if you look at the date now, if I go past there, so we've just changed the date there from, and it goes forwards and backwards. So really sort of well done movement because sometimes they'll, they'll go backwards but they'll only go backwards when they hit about five o'clock in you know the previous day you have to wind all the way back and then all the way forward um but this is well done you know this this movement wants for nothing it really does um it's an in-house movement how in-house i don't know but it's certainly unique to the panerai brand um and it's a you know it seems very robust it seems very accurate um it's a it's a really incredible thing the gmt function is also something that's not unique to Panerai, but it's probably one of the better brands or the best brands for a GMT function because it doesn't use specifically a 24 hour format, it uses a 12 hour format. So right now we have the time set here, it's quarter to two, okay, which it's not, but it, I've set it to that, okay. And say now we fly to, I don't know, Spain, 
we go one hour ahead. Okay, I'm in the UK, so it's one hour ahead. If I then move in the first position of the crown, the uh, the hour hand now, so we have a little arrow marker that's appeared, and we have the main hour hand. Now the main hour hand is now telling me it's quarter to three in Spain, but it's telling me it's quarter to two back in the UK. So okay, so it's not very useful for jumping one hour ahead, but when you jump in lots of time zones, having that 12 hour format is really easy because you're probably going to know whether it's evening or daytime back home and you can instantly just look at it and know what time it is in both places so if you're going to ring a relative you know you're hopefully not going to wake them up type of thing I always think it's really useful to have that um, if I just move that out of the way should you not know when uh, whether it's day or night back home you do actually have an AM and PM indicator here which will tell you so you set the time basically on that and then make sure everything else is correct and you then know whether you're going to wake your relatives up back home um, so it's really that simple it's very simple but clever idea and it works really well if you're looking at other GMT watches such as say the Rolex GMT where you have a separate hand that's always separate and it goes around the dial 24 hours basically if you were to look at that in the dark um, you probably would find it difficult to tell what time it actually is back home um, so and even if you look at it in the daylight to be honest you know you've still got to look where it is you might not necessarily recognize straight away like you would on a 12 hour format so I just think it's very clever very unique um, you know not a lot of GMT watches do have that feature and I think a lot should um, because the other great thing of course is that you can just hide that 24 hour hand sorry that uh, GMT hand behind the main hour hand um, and now it's just a, a two hand watch you know and that's so that keeps it less complicated um, you know on top of an already complicated dial so very unique very interesting um, very clever and I think uh, it could certainly you know show up on a, a certain other amount of watches very easily uh, and it would do them a lot of favours so the other unique sort of feature we have, or not unique but uh, well I think it might be unique to Panerai this, I've never actually seen it on, on another watch um, if I pull the crown out from position 1 to all the way out at position 2 watch the seconds hand here, it's currently at 55 or so, if I pull it jump straight to the zero, okay if I push it back in we'll let it go round a bit give it a few seconds to get to say I'll just bring it up so you can see okay so we'll let the seconds hand come around, it's now at about 15 just over there going round towards 20 and if I pull it out again all the way the crown straight back okay so that's now gone to 12 um, I'll just wind that on and then you can see it better so you can see now the seconds hands at 12 forget this hand because that's actually GMT related but basically what that is is a seconds reset um, so if like me you want to set your time accurately on the watch you want to time how it's running um, what you'll usually do is you'll wait for the seconds hand to come all the way around and when it gets to 12 you'll pull the crown out and then you'll set it against something else and then push the crown back in and away you go with this you're just taking that waiting period out basically because you just pull it out and it always resets back to zero straight away um, so you know pretty useful it's not an essential feature by any man but it's you know it's really really cool um, and something I've had on a watch before and I found it very good to be honest you know because I do um, I do tend to wear my watches in rotation so um, you know it was something that I would generally let the power run out on that watch so when I'm coming to set it it's just much easier if you just go straight to zero set the time and off you go you're not waiting as long um, so pretty cool uh, pretty unique pretty um, pretty clever sort of feature um, just wipe that got my fingerprints over it so again we have um, the Radiomir case I'll just screw that crown back in Another thing about this as well is it's one of the finest winding movements I've ever ever used. When you wind this manually, which you can do, so it can be automatic, but you can also manual wind it. That first of all, the crown grips fantastically. Um, you know, you're not going to slip at all, and it just winds buttery smooth, really, really nice. So, um, you know, I love that. The case, just going back to that though. In this case, solid white gold. 
uh, 18 karat white gold case, uh, 45 millimeters. We've got the wire lugs either end, and if we flip the watch over, we have the automatic movement. This is a P2003 movement, um, 10 day power reserve. We have the power reserve on the front on the dial. We have some white gold uh, markings here to show you what type of gold it is, that type of thing, the usual thing with gold. Um, it states it's an automatic movement on this side here. And we have the Officini or Officini Panerai logos uh, around the rest of the case back. Um, the movement is basically we have sort of uh, decoration going on to the, in sort of a brushed form. Uh, sorry, that's light bouncing off it, uh, in sort of a brushed form, so hard to tell on the video. Alright, so it's not the most decorated movement ever, but it's a lovely movement. You can see what you want to see, you can see things moving around, um, you know, sp the spring, the balance spring and everything, you know, it's great to see that. It's a lovely movement, it's not as open as you would hope, but I guess that they couldn't do that. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's open enough that I'd be very pleased with this. I think it's really, really nice to look at. Um, and at the end of the day, that's why it's there under a, under a sapphire crystal, so we can see it. Um, that's the 235. So, um, oh, the other thing as well is, I'm not sure if I've mentioned, the luminescence is absolutely fantastic on this watch. Um, you know, really, really good because of the sandwich dial. Um, it just really, really pops, really stands out, and it does last a long way into the night. Um, so, you know, you'll be able to tell the time, and you've got luminescence to the seconds hand, you've got luminescence to the AM, PM hand, you've got luminescence even to the power reserve meter, and the main hand, and the GMT hand, and of course all the numbers and the markers. Um, so this is one watch you are going to be able to tell the time on in the dark, without a doubt. Um, and that... I think does sum up the, the 235 altogether. Um, it's a lovely watch, it's a beautiful watch, it's not for the Panerai person that wants a simplified dial, that's obvious to everybody, um, but it is um, a very very nice watch to, to have in your hands. And if we put it on the wrist here, my wrist is um, 6.75 inches, so just under 7 inches. Um, and you can get an idea of how it looks. I'll just watch, wipe that off again because it looks terrible with all the fingerprints. Um, and you can see how that fits. So just under seven inch wrist, I think it personally fits absolutely fine. Um, I feel like it wears very well. Um, it's not too big. It's probably on the limits of what I can wear, but it doesn't look silly. Um, if I was looking at a 47 millimeter Panerai here, it would look like a, a wrist, wrist clock rather, rather than a wrist watch. Um, this is fine, you know, the, the 45mm fits fine. Um, the wire lugs help with the way it fits. Um, you know, and also, I've always found with Panerai's, if you actually buy a thick strap, so this is a relatively thin strap, at the, you know, in, it, in its sort of depth uh, at the top. If you were to get a thicker strap, so one of these that's sort of made by Toshi or various different people like that, um, where you get a real thick piece of leather, um, it actually helps to wrap around the wrist even more. So if you are struggling to wear a Panerai, I've always found that helps. Um, but in this case, even this strap is absolutely fine. Um, fits really well, wears really well. It's heavy, but it's not too heavy. It's got a flat back, so it sits nice and firm on the wrist. Um, and, you know, there's, there's really nothing that I can pick apart with this watch because it's got everything that you're going to want, going to need. It's a very usable but very dressy, um, but still very sporty watch. It's a very great, it's a great all-rounder to be honest. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I've waffled on a bit. Um, it's a bit tired, and a bit late and I'm a bit tired as I've just proved there. Um, but if you please leave comments by the, you know, definitely subscribe to the channel because I am trying to grow it. Uh, I'm going to be bringing you more and more watch reviews as, the, as I can do. And obviously if you subscribe, you'll actually be alerted to when I've released a new video. And uh, yeah, make sure you give me a thumbs up as well if you like the video. But if you're going to give me a thumbs down, I don't mind it, it's your choice. Um, but let me know why. Is it something to do with the video that I can improve on or was it just the watch? Um, you know, that type of thing. So it's always handy if you actually, you know, help me to improve constructive criticism. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.